When it comes to developing technology, what Russia needs is not just capital, but also management personnel with business savvy. Skolkovo, the Moscow School of Management, is situated in Moscow. It's undergoing renovation, getting ready for the new school year to begin. Set up in 2006, Skolkovo is the first Russian vocational institution of higher education that offers business management courses. The mission is very specific. We uh, set out basically to, if we put it very concisely, developing what we call entrepreneurial leaders for fast-moving economies. So we're sort of focusing on leadership talent for difficult environments. We have to have a vision because it's all about change. It's about, you know, sort of recognizing that there are challenges in the environment, but also opportunities and grab those opportunities and run with them. Russia's economic development led some big enterprises to realize a severe shortage of talent. So they started this business school and appointed Wilfred van Honecker, who had 20 years of relevant experience in China, to be its dean. Skolkovo began operating in 2006, specializing in economic development and business management of emerging markets. The interchange between China, India, Russia and then the Central Asian Republics is relatively new. So the concept of network, the power of network and the role it plays will not change. But it just will be different people that before didn't talk to one another and might have been more competitors looking at the same market that they certainly realized that they better off, you know, working together with themselves in terms of the markets they find themselves in. There will be changes in, and, and we see this not only in emerging markets but also in established markets. As Russia is trying to promote its technology industry, Skolkovo's mission is to supply business professionals for Russia's technology industry. In October 2010, the Russian government allocated 2.8 billion US dollars to construct a technology industrial city near Skolkovo, similar to the United States Silicon Valley. Foreigners and locals with technology ideas are encouraged to set up companies here. The project offers cheap office space, residences, R&D facilities, tax incentives, as well as exemptions from many current requirements on business startup. Some multinationals, including Google, Siemens, Cisco, Intel and Nokia, have joined the project. The Russian government hopes that Skolkovo's research capacity can turn some technology ideas into business plans and that its students will become entrepreneurs and play a part in developing Russia's technology industry because education is part of the institutional infrastructure and that's where economic development starts. You can invite foreign companies, foreign direct investment, but it's all about educating, you know, the basic talent in terms of changing the mindset, making people recognize what the opportunities are, give them the tools and the skills and then, you know, the confidence. We would like to initiate uh, a few important projects that should uh, attract people to uh, uh, work in Russia uh, and to uh, apply uh, their talents uh, within Russia, not going somewhere else, not going to United States, Europe uh, or um, to any other place uh, in the world. This is why we initiated uh, inno innovative projects including uh, the Russian Silicon Valley project called Skolkova uh, project. Russia's population started to decline in the early 90s because of a massive brain drain that resulted from economic and social chaos in the country. It wasn't until 2009 that the population began to increase slightly as internal development improved. However, there's still a shortage of business management professionals today. Now in her 20s, Anastasia is an administrative supervisor of a British international school. She's busier during the summer holidays than on school days as she has to train new teachers who come from different places, help them settle down and prepare for the new school year. Anastasia got a scholarship when she was in high school to study for a year in the United States. There she learnt about the world outside of Russia. Yes, I think during the, the year in the States showed a lot that uh, life can be different, not only in the sense of uh, income, the level of size of income, but also in the sense of lifestyle. She then returned to Russia to finish her university studies. Then she worked as an administrative personnel for two years before pursuing an MBA program in Spain. One of the reasons why I chose to study abroad is to 
learn about foreign practices of doing business, uh, to learn more about how other companies solve the problems that are common not only for Russia but for other countries in the world. Anastasia could have pursued her career abroad or worked for large enterprises in Russia upon graduation. However, she decided to return to Moscow to manage this international school so that Russian students can have a chance to experience foreign education. Find out about the first concepts, about their uh, view on different facts and uh, events around the world. That's why the school is very, schools are very important in developing the new mentality, in providing children with new ideas. Many of the younger generation has studied abroad or worked for foreign companies. They appreciate the efficiency, open attitude and modernity of the West. That's why they support Russia's economic and social reforms. This is also why Anastasia and many intellectuals have decided to stay in Russia to play a part in this progress. Having seen how the nation has evolved from communism to modernization, Anastasia hopes that the reforms would put an end to the bureaucratic inefficiency and corruption left behind from the old era. One of the reasons why people are so tempted to get involved into corruption, even instead of not, not being without being asked for a bribe, they tend to actually offer a bribe. One of the reasons is because the processes, uh, processes are so slow and so bureaucratic, you, you will be running from one organization to another for weeks and months, and everyone will be saying that actually, no, we're sorry, it's another department, it's another uh, authority, it's another legal uh, body. I think if everyone contributes a little bit, every company says no to temptation of giving a bribe in order to receive their, let's say, approval in a week instead of five months. I think if everyone contributes towards that, towards that not soon, but at some point we will reach the level where the procedures will be transparent and where the bureaucracy will be uh, less uh, damaging to the business here's part of the system and needs to be addressed. I mean, it's, you know, it, it, it happens in other emerging markets as well, but uh, if you want people to develop their own ideas, new businesses, they have to be able to protect those. According to Arkady Dvorkovic, advisor on economic reforms, to synergize with the development of the technology industry, new laws have been formulated to bypass the original system. This will protect the projects and also speed up bureaucratic and legal reforms. Our president and our government uh, mm, have announced uh, the agenda uh, of modernization, not just to support the uh, some specific projects uh, in some particular areas, but also to improve the general investment climate, uh, reduce bureaucracy, and in particular fight corruption. We believe that we have a chance right now, a good chance, and that since there is a new generation of people who believe that uh, Russia can live without corruption, uh, and uh, the president uh, is uh, confident that he can achieve uh, good results in this process. If you want to receive something back, you have to contribute, you have to uh, give something in order to ensure that your country prospers and develops and grows. During World War II, the German Nazis invaded a number of large cities. The Russians resisted with courage, fought the fiercest battles and finally won the war. The eternal flame in Victory Park is to commemorate more than 20 million Russian soldiers and civilians who sacrificed their lives in the war. It also reminds the Russians that it is the selfless dedication of generations of people who have enabled the nation to overcome difficulties and challenges. We started the change, but I think we're still somewhere in the process. And I really would like for my children, uh, for, for my grandchildren, to be proud of uh, Moscow, to be proud of Russia. 
I believe in the potential of this country. No question about this. I mean, they have some unique assets that they can leverage around the world. I believe in the people, you know, create potential, create ideas, well-educated. Um, the system needs to change. And what is the vision for this country? Uh, I'm optimistic. I, I can see a positive trajectory. The term New Russians appeared in the early 90s when the economy started to open up. It was negatively associated with squanderers and Philistines. Today, the term New Russians has a very different meaning. A new generation that uh, uh, is optimistic about uh, Russia, about uh, living in Russia, about building uh, New Russia. New Russia based uh, on uh, uh, talents, uh, on hard work, uh, uh, and uh, on uh, innovative approach uh, to life. Uh, it's still a minority and we do not have the new Russia yet. Uh, but we are on the way, we started. In the next episode, we will take a look at how Russia is shaping the future and creating cooperative opportunities for both China and Hong Kong.